Hey guys, welcome back to part 3 of our Tamiya 124 Honda NSX build along with the Zoom On Type R Trans Kit. So, we're back on the interior. This has been flocked. My wonderful assistant Hannah has flocked it for me. Uh, we're going to glue in place our center console and we're going to use one of the Zoom On absolutely beautiful turned aluminium gear sticks. So, we drill the appropriate size hole in the top of our existing gear stick. A little dab of CA glue. And that is glued in place like that really easy nice and simple and a really nice upgrade to the copy of the car so we put a little bit of super glue where it needs to be mounted pop it in place make sure it's all straight and job done there we go um, the seat rails that we made in the previous video again a little bit of bobsmith gold on the side i've already test fitted these to make sure they fit it's a case of just putting them on underneath there we go just like so Test fit these before you commit to glue to make sure you've got your angles of your photo edge correct. And there we go, that's that glued in place. And then some CA glue on the bottom of the feet. And we're going to glue this in place in the floor panel of the car. And like I say, the fit on these is fantastic. I test fitted these several times across the uh, along the way here across this build. And I know they fit in there absolutely perfect in the existing mounting points. So, top quality from uh, Zoom On. The parts do fit very, very well. So, in this case, just getting it lined up and pushing it home and holding for a second or two. Let the CA glue grab it. We can repeat that for the other side as well. Like so. And there we go. There's both of the iconic Recaro race seats in. Adds a little bit of colour to an otherwise pretty drab interior. There we go. The foot pedals we've painted black and we've got some photo etch detail. So a little tiny dab of CA glue on them and glue the appropriate pedal in place. Get them all lined up and leave that to dry to one side for a little bit. A little bit more CA glue on the palette. These little... Uh, Tattoo cups are very handy for CA glue. And then we can smear a little bit of CA glue just on the top of them they mount up. And then we can pop this in place. So like I said, the interior, the, the trans kit spices the interior up a little bit, makes it look a bit less bland. So definitely a worthy addition. There we go, and then we can test fit our dashboard, make sure it all fits. And then we can commit to glue. And yeah, not a bad looking interior. The grey brown leather colour looks good. The flocking looks really good. The seats look great. Um, yeah, very happy how that's looking. So now we test fit it. We can commit to some glue. The wash has brought out some detail on the dashboard panels as well. And there we go. A quick test fit in the car to see how it looks. That looks very nice. Really happy with that. Those red seats iconic and synonymous with these cars they look great there's me showing my live camera and not you guys as i always tend to do yes there we go but anyway you can see it on this camera and yeah that's looking really really good very nice it's gonna look really nice when it's all together all the contrasting colors and then the engine so we painted the engine red in the last part we need to brush paint some black on the rest of it you could sit and mask all this you'd be there all day or you could just paint it with some water-based paints we've got Vallejo model color black here uh, thinned with a drop of water paint on with a nice Tamiya flat brush any excess we get anywhere we don't want we can wipe off with a pointed cotton bud uh, because we've used lacquer paint we'll put water based over it it literally wipes straight off and have some careful brush work on all the parts there we go that is that done that's looking good so it's a visible engine, but it's not massively visible. So you don't need to be too worried about uh, the exact detail of it. We've got the cam covers going in place, or valve covers, wherever these are. There'll be cam covers on this, won't they? So in place, a little bit of excess CA glue there. So we'll just quickly wipe that off. There we go. And on the other side. And a little bit more CA glue to get the other one in place as well so again the red adds a little bit of interest to the engine probably 90 percent of these covers i saw um, they were black they were just plain old black i seen one or two red and i thought you know what it's going to break up the monotone and uh, make it look a little bit more interesting 
so that's what we'll go with and you can see them through the mesh grill uh, on the engine cover so i think it was worth doing um, certainly takes away from the drabness of just the plain silver you can see how well our silver uh, bright aluminium looks very highly pigmented very smooth looks absolutely fantastic and then we can start assembling some of the subframes together so the engine mounts a little bit weirdly on this it attaches to that back point there that i'm say gluing now and then there's two completely different mounting points each side it's a little bit confusing. You need to look at the instruction book and the engine a few times for you to figure out which way it's trying to get you to go. You're like, what? So I'm looking at it thinking, what the hell is this trying to... Which way? Which, that way? Yes. Yep, there you go. It's that way. So that goes in there. And then each little point on the side grabs a hold of it. And there we go. We can let that dry for a bit and then get it in place. So it's a pretty secure mounting point, but it's just a bit odd because everything is... Um, there's no symmetry there at all. And then a couple of dabs of CA glue on our lovely chassis, which we've detail painted some black on as well, as per the instructions. Again, we use the water-based paint uh, model colour um, black. Uh, looking good. We can get our exhausts in place. They were painted in titanium, if I remember right, ProScale titanium. Which is looking really good. And then we can get this subframe in, engine mount carrier in. So a few strategic places of CA glue. And then weighing everything up how it goes in place. We can get it all mounted in. So really nice engine, really nice chassis on this as well. Looks great in silver. As I said several times through the build, just the base kit alone of this kit is well worth having. It's a very, very nice kit for its money. We've got an anti-roll bar as well. So again, careful CA glue, careful uh, application and location. We can get that in place. And then we've got another bit, which I've got no idea what that is. I'm not going to lie. Um, it's a valve trumpet. That's what it is. Yeah, definitely. That's a valve trumpet if ever I've seen one. So, I'd like to guess what it is, but I honestly have no idea. Is it part of the exhaust? No, it can't be. What the hell is that? If anyone in the chat knows or the comments, let me know. Because I haven't got a clue what that is. Like I say, JDMs aren't my thing. I've not built a massive amount of them over the years. Uh, I've not got a lot of interest in quite a lot of them. There are a few cars that get my interest, the Skylines... NSX does, things like that. Um, so I'm not fully up to speed on what they are. We've got the drive shafts in place as well. We've got the steering, sorry, the suspension struts in there as well. And then there's the other drive shaft going into the side. One's longer than the other. So get it in place. And then we can offer up the other suspension strut. So this was painted in semi-gloss black. And we painted the spring in X1 enamel gloss black just to add a little bit of difference uh, difference in tone try and make it look a bit more interesting there we go everything fits really positively as well it's, it's a good fitting kit as well uh, i had no real trouble getting anything to fit so good kit for a beginner as well um i always suggest beginners avoid kits with loads of decals because I think decals can be a little bit frustrating. Even as a seasoned modeler, uh, they can prove troublesome. So I always suggest a road car for a beginner. And then we've got this other part to go on top as well. Don't know what this is. Again, I'm not sure. But it goes onto that pipe from before. And then this little subframe goes over the top. Everything locks in really positively. really good now we can get our brake discs in we've got the poly caps in the hubs we've got our p on the discs as well and our freshly painted calipers we did probably a day before and then we get them all in place making sure we've got the correct ones as i'm doing right here quite a tight fit on the hub so a little bit of persuasion a little bit of glue on there as well we can get these glued in place So when you're applying glue like this, we're using these precision tips, avoid the polycap. 
<coughs> we want to use the polycap for our wheels so don't get glue in there and ruin it. And then once they're kind of mounted in place like so, we can get this other piece in. So quite a complex uh, chassis on this. There's quite a lot of parts to it. Another anti-roll bar. But like I say, it goes together with relative ease. Looks really good as well, painted in silver with the black accents. Looking good. And then there's just a whole host of parts to go together here. So make sure you keep following your instructions. And get everything orientated and connected the correct way. And to be careful with that CA glue, make sure you get everything the right way around like I didn't before you commit to fully gluing everything in place. I think I already have, oh no, I don't have CA on there. See, I was test fitting it. Follow my own advice for once, rather than do as I say, not as I do. So a little bit of CA glue in each hole. The beauty test fitting, we already know which way around it goes, because nine times out of 10, if you locate those points together with CA glue, you're not getting the back apart without breaking it. So well worth doing. Right, there's these little pieces that go on here as well. Again, I'm not sure what these are. I don't know if they were shocks or what they are, I'm not sure. A little bit hard when you don't have knowledge of the car, you're kind of guessing what the parts are, but it was silver, it got glued in place, and uh, yeah, it looked all right. That's what I'm gonna say. Same on the other side. We can pop that in as well. Basically, this is one whole sub-assembly that will just slot in the vehicle. So our brake and hub section just clicks in place now. And then we got our steering rod. Connect that, and there's one big unit of the front suspension all ready to be installed. We'll get there in the end. There we go. Looking good. And then we can get our suspension struts in place as well. So a little dab of CA glue to hold them in just while we get the other part in. Then we can push it all home and make sure everything is locked in nice and tight. That it's straight and all in the correct position because we don't want a wonky uh, a wonky drivetrain. We want this thing to sit nice and squat. Now, I am going to do this as factory height. I've already test fitted the height, and it sits at factory ride height. Now, we could faff around and lower it, but I'm kind of happy to do this as a standard kind of out of the factory build. Um, this wouldn't be the easiest car to lower, so I'm more than happy to do it as like a factory ride height. Uh, does it look better lower? Yes, it would look a lot better lower, but we're not going to do it. We're literally going factory here. And then, like I say, we put some CA glue in there, and then this whole unit, once I just get everything lined up, make sure I've got it correct, will all slot in place, and should push fully home. And there we go, that's it in place. And now we can glue our interior tub in place as well. Some strategic CA, points, uh, CA glue on the locate points. And we can glue our interior in. Like I say, it's a nice simple interior, but with those red seats, it makes it look a bit more interesting. You could put some harnesses in if you wanted to, but like I say, I was going for that standard look. And then we can mount the chassis in the kit. So, locate at the back, it slots in, and then there's two little pins at the front. Make sure the back's in place, and it's a case of just pressing it down on the front until they're both home, like so. And there we go. Make sure it's properly in place looks like it's a little bit too far back the edge is nint so we'll just tease that in place there we go and there we go sit straight ride height looks spot on very happy right this engine cover piece the intake uh the air cleaner we're going to paint this um i'm guessing it's the math center is it mass airflow center we're going to paint this piece silver anyway and again just breaks up the monotony of the black. Is it totally correct? I'm not sure, to be honest. And it probably wouldn't be the shine either. It'd be like a matte colour. But because it's a fancy engine on a supercar, and yeah, this is technically a supercar 
although not all the sense of the word, it is classed as a supercar. So yeah, some careful brush painting of the Vallejo uh, Silver. We'll get this all nicely painted. And there we go. And then we've got our P piece to go on the top. So we're just going to line it up and check it all. It looks really good. Again, adds a little bit of visual interest to the engine bay. So there's two little tabs on the end that just need bending. They don't bend 90 degrees. They bend off a few degrees out because they like fold over the edge. Once you've got it test fitted and made sure it all goes in place, apply a couple of dabs of CA glue on the top. We're going to spread that out so it doesn't all squeeze out the side. And then we can pop the P in place and give it a hold for a second or two to make sure it grabs it. There we go. Right, rear light. Um, the kit does come with masks. For some reason, I forgot the bottom two on the left and right hand side. No idea, but I missed them out. Yes, one of those things, unfortunately. Mistakes happen and I make mistakes all the time. So we've got some clear X27 red through the uh, airbrush and this is completely unthinned. We're going to spray it on um, and once we get near the end of the coat we'll thin it a touch so it levels out and the windscreen's been masked off with the zoom on mass set which is an extra um, part of the kit that I bought. And we're going to put some Mr. Servicer 1500 black down. Nice thin coat just building it up. We'll do the front screen and the rear screen together. Just nice and slow. You don't want to flood the paint on because it'll lift and get under the masking. There we go. Zoom on mask set. Very nice. Um, there's some other mask sets I use from the UK and they just leave all the residue on the plastic. Absolute waste of time. And lately I've got quite a lot of those I've invested in. Uh, I've been literally putting them onto Tamiya masking tape and using them as a template to cut out the Tamiya masking tape. But the Zoom On stuff is just like masking tape from Tamiya. Same quality, same type, same feel. Uh, this went on and off, leaving no risk to you behind, no bleed through. Fitted absolutely perfect. And like I say, with some Mr. Service of 1500 black, it's a perfect job for this. So just a couple of light coats, several, two or three light coats over the top. Building up nice and slow. And there we go, job done. Right, now we're on to polishing. So, we're going to start with 6,000 on this and then I'll work our way up to 8. And then we're going to go through the Menzerna, medium, coarse, uh, compound, then fine compound, followed up by Autoglim Super Resin Polish. And we're going to use our rotary polishes from Zoom On again. Absolutely sold by these. Now, remember those eight pillars I was talking about earlier? I was so careful sanding these so I didn't snap them. And we basically primed, painted the car, masked the car, sprayed the black twice, stripped the car, repainted, remasked, got it all to this stage, and then I broke the mirror. Uh, sorry, I broke the A pillar, polishing the body with a bloody cloth. Of all things to break it with, I broke it with a piece of cloth, polishing the body. Not polishing the A pillar, I was a little bit too rough and I slipped. And my hand went straight through it and cracked it in half. So you'll see that in a little bit. Very frustrating to get through all those major stages of prep, stripping the paint, everything to go and break it, polishing it up. When I wasn't even polishing that particular part. Really annoying. So we'll work our way through the 6 and the 8. We're going to wipe it off with a clean bit of tissue each time to see how we're looking. And we're looking to take the top shine off each coat. And that way we get rid of any high spots, any fluff, any dust. And also thins out the 2K to make it look a bit more realistic as well. So the 3M Chiser pads, they're in water there, a little bit of washing up liquid. They are absolutely fantastic. High quality, work really, really well. Just take your time because they are very, very efficient. See, I even slipped then, didn't break it. But no, I break it with a cloth later on. Absolute idiot. I was livid at the time to think I got through all that painting and prep. And even taking all the paint off and then I go and break it with a cloth. Couldn't believe it at all. So with the tricep pads are going all around the body. We're just scuffing it up, taking back the 2K, flatten it back. And then our compounds and polishes will bring back that beautiful high shine. 
So just be careful of any edges, any corners, any raised areas where the paint is thinner because these are very efficient polishing sponges and they will burn through the paint in the blink of an eye if you're not careful. So really take your time, no real pressure on them, just let them do the job. Right, I've got my Proxon Multi-Tool, I've got my Zoom On uh, polishing sets which we sell at UMP. Uh, being restocked very soon, there's another 30 sets on the way. This is the coarse compound brush and we've got the medium cup polish from Menzerna here as well, the 2500. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply it by finger all over the top surfaces of the model. So the boot lid, engine cover, the uh, roof and the bonnet as well. And the reason we're doing this is so the tool doesn't flick it out everywhere. So once you've done that, wipe off your finger. Maybe grab a bit more like I've done here. And just rub it all over the model. And then we'll grab our proxon tool with our coarse compound this is a foot operated tool which makes it super easy to use and very gently we're going to go around and polish all the car and it'll bring back that lovely sheen we had uh, which will look even better now um, after we've flatted it all so no real pressure on there just let the mop do the work we're on about i think it's 5000 rpm i think we're on so not a huge speed and this is very controllable low torque and the main thing you gotta watch out for here is hitting the body with the yellow piece because it will damage the body. So just take your time, keep it straight at 90 degrees all the time to the part. And even the A pillars, I managed to polish those with these without damaging them. So I can't believe I did it, taking the polish off with a cloth. I really can't, um, honestly. You don't, you don't understand how sick I felt. I was like, really? I got that far and then broken. But we fixed them and you can't even see it in the end. So going all around these parts, so I tend to do the bonnet, the roof and the booth first, then do one side, then the other, and then the front and rear bumpers separate, and any ancillary parts like wing mirrors, spoilers, etc. at the end. And we work our way through them all. These polishing sponges and the Manzana compounds are absolute game changers. Um, I've refused to use these sponges for years, and I'm so glad I tried them again because they just change how the 2K looks. It just It's the ultimate tool for flattening back and polishing the uh, the 2k so with each step of the way we're going to polish it back up with clean tissue uh t-shirt material cloth and you can see just off the coarse compound the shine on that roof is phenomenal and we've still got two compounds to work through so they're very efficient in men's earners in combination with the sponges they work absolutely fantastic and then we're just going to work our way around the whole car we're going to do this with each um compound of sponge so it'd be the blue next then the red and we use the blue with the final cut Menzerna and then the red with the Autoclum Super Resin Polish at the end. And like I say, we're going to clean it up in between different compounds, polish it all back up, get a toothbrush in the panel line to remove any excess polish. And what we'll do at the end when we're finished all polishing is give it all a jet wash. I bought a cheap Fenger or Fenger airbrush off Amazon. It was £16 and all I'm using it for is for spraying water. It's a cheap, nasty airbrush. Um, but it works just fine at jet washing all the panels to get the um, remnants of the polish out. So here we go, broke the A-pillar, absolute pillock. With that cloth right there, I slipped and went right through it. Absolute idiot I am. So I've got a glue here I've had for several years, never used once. And it is the uh, Mr. Cement Black. It's actually a black glue and I thought... Do you know what? This is perfect because it'll blend into the black of the body. So I've got it relatively where I want it. And I'm going to load the brush up just a little bit. Not a huge amount of it. And we're just going to brush it on until it covers it all. Then, as you can see, it just needs straightening a touch. There we go. We can get it in place. And I'm going to put that to one side for several hours to dry. Once that's dry, we can mask off the lower front splitter, the rear around the engine cover, and around the bottom of the rear bumper as well for all these black sections that need painting. So very careful masking. All around this engine cover shut here. There's a little grill at the back and all around the lower piece around the back of the car as well. A bit awkward to mask, but worth doing because it just takes away from that whiteness. So very careful on masking as well. And there we go, that is looking good. Looking very good. We're going to paint the interior uh, of the body shell in a minute as well. That'll be painted up black. But yeah, good masking. Saves a lot of time. Saves a lot of damage. 
poor masking, you'll have bleed through the lot. Don't skimp on your tapes. Stick with high quality modeling tapes. Yes, I know you can get painter's tape, yada yada yada, 3M tape. Been there and used them and they all bleed through. The Tamiya tape, the Azu tape, absolutely fantastic stuff. And there we go, we give the body a final polish up, get rid of any um, masking tape residue, anything there. Just get it all nicely polished up. Being extra careful of that A pillar that we've already broke once. Like I say, glued in place of the black glue, you've got to really look closely to see that it's broke because it's uh, it's actually fixed it really, really well. And I've got to say, this black and white body looks absolutely stunning. Right, silver now for the rear tail light. So this was the bit it wants you to cut out. And this is the bit I don't really get. So this is water-based model factory, uh, model factory, model color air. Uh, it's just a silver. What we're going to do is going to brush it in and then we'll put our light unit in and then we'll use a cotton bud to remove any excess paint that may be showing still. While that's drying, I'm going to have a quick test fit of the rear window, which has been unmasked. And it fits in there absolutely perfect with the engine cover. Very good. And then with the front and side glass, giving a good clean up with a glasses cleaning cloth, getting my nasty fingerprints off there. Best thing to clean these clear parts is a glasses cleaning cloth, 100%. Uh, anything else seems to scratch it. There's a case of holding it in whilst we get some bobs of super gold in there. Now be careful doing this. If you've rubbed that glass a lot and caused a lot of static, I've had the Bob Smith's kind of static out in lines across the glass, so be very, very careful. Uh, I'd advise using an anti-static brush to try and discharge some of the static. But yeah, I've had it where it literally spiders out super glue across the part and just, well, kind of ruins it. Luckily, super glue debonder will take it off clear parts without ruining them. So we can get everything glued in place. We've got the top and the bottom part of the screening. And then this whole section of glass here is what holds in the rear tailgate mount at the back. With our model uh, dried, we can get some sear glue just strategically in the corners and then grab our light unit, which we've unmasked now. So I unmasked the red top pieces at the side and resprayed them so they weren't quite as dark as the main part, but still had that different look that the car should have. A couple more engine parts to go in place. Um, I forget what that bit was now. I completely forgot, but that's glued in place. We're getting to the end of the build now. As you can see, we're painting interior black as well. Again, model color black. And then we can get all our grills that we painted earlier on. These are the photo edge grills we painted in part two, I believe it was. Say glued in place. So there's a couple of these around the sides and the front. So one mistake I did make on the kit, and I'll be honest, I'm kind of glad I did. The, this kit has front driving lights at the bottom. I'm just putting the grill in where they are. Now on the Type R, they should be removed and that's just one big intake. I'm not gonna lie, I completely didn't see that in the trans kit details and I left them in. And uh, when I look back, I'm kind of glad I did because, well not in his mind individual, um, I think it looks better. I think it genuinely looks better. So these parts, I've rolled them a little bit, just to give them a little bit of shape. So it's a case of getting them in place and holding them. Um, the dry, driving lights are here now, as I was saying. So a little bit of silver model air in there, and then we can get our light lenses in place. So we're doing the old um, Sharpie Mark trip pen around to give them the rubber seal look. And then some very careful, steady application of Bob Smith's gold we can glue these in place. So yeah, while these shouldn't be here, I'm kind of glad I did. Cause like I say, it adds individuality to my build. And to be honest, to me, this is one of the main, it's the front end of this NSX. It's quite an iconic part of it. So I'm glad I left them in. And uh, yeah, there you go. The Super Gold's great for mounting clear parts. And then here we go, the final mount of the body. We're just gonna slot it into the back piece like so. There we go. Slide that in and then turn it around and then just press fit. Now it's a tight fit now with everything in there. It's definitely a tight fit. So it needs a little bit of persuasion to get it in place and to get it around the side as well. There we go. I 
That's looking good. That white body, the metal chassis, red interior. It looks absolutely phenomenal. Such a pretty car. It really is. Right, it's got its own number plate. It's got a Type R number plate. Or was it NSX? I forget now. We'll see in a little bit. So it comes with an embossed piece of P for the back, which we're going to glue in place. And then we've got a matching decal that goes over the top. And once it's all set, it looks like a proper stamped number plate. These zoom on number plates are fantastic. We do USA, Canada, uh, Japan set over on the site, and they are great. They add a nice bit of detail to your cars. And uh, with them being embossed, they look real. They look absolutely fantastic. So we get this lined up and in place where we want it. Make sure it's center of the, uh, the bracket or the mount where it should be. And then we can apply our window mirror insert here as well, which again came with the uh, Zoom on kit. So self adhesive mirror reflectors or glasses rather. There we go. Remember earlier on the build, I think it was part one, we put some pins in these to make them easier to mount. And that's going to pay off for us in a little bit because it does make a huge difference. Rather than trying to just stick a part to a part with two flat surfaces, we've got a very positive locating point now. Just the smallest amount of glue will glue these in place permanently without knocking them off. And again, like I say, these mirror inserts, another nice touch from Zoom on. There we go. Small amount of CA glue where we need it. This needs the tiniest little bit. And then we can mount it into our holes we did in part one. And get the mirrors angled at the right direction. Same on the other side. This one needed trimming a bit. It was a little bit too long. And the hole needed widening on both of them. So I'd rather make the hole too small. We've already got the pilot hole there. Uh, we know where they're going to sit. And obviously when you start adding paint and clear coat, the torrents tighten up a little bit. So sometimes you'll have to redrill a hole. And again, slots in place, absolutely perfect. The little dab of glue, the yabba dabba do. I've not said that for a while, have I? Uh, holding that in place, brilliant. And then our metallic Honda badge for the front. So this is like a reverse sticker. So you put it in place, burnish it down. So you can use an old cotton bud or even a new one if you want to push the boat out. And just push it down. And then peel the plastic off, and it should leave the emblem behind. And it's a nice touch. Just now, there is one for the back as well. For some reason, it was telling me to put it under the um, light. And I was like, yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. I'll put it on top. So I actually put it on top in the end. But it's a nice touch, and uh, yeah, I think it definitely adds to the detail of the car. We've left a hitchhiker behind. I'm not sure what he's doing there. We'll very carefully remove that from the body. And there we go. Very, very nice. And then the rear one in place, exactly the same. We can glue that in place like so. Right, pop our decal over our number plate. So we need to line this up because it's uh, an embossed number plate uh, PE underneath and all the lettering matches up. We want to get it all lined up, set it in place in the usual style. And then we've got a couple of little light units that we've... Um, Used our Sharpie marker pen on to simulate the seal. It's a great old school tip. And then they literally slotted in with no glue. They just held themselves in there. I think the tolerance was that tight on them. That they fitted in absolutely perfect. There you go, it doesn't even fall out. Same on the other one. Now again, there were a couple of resin pieces for these. Uh, I just didn't think they were necessary. So, painted silver. These things look absolutely spot on. There we go. And then one of the final touches is these nice turned metal exhaust tips. So a little dab of CA glue. And we can get them mounted in place. A real nice touch these. And then we'll paint the inside of them in black as well. So they don't look as sterile. We go get them nice and straight set them where we want them and then these clear indicators held on a little bit of pva based uh tamiya craft bond 
I was going to put them on and paint them yellow, or orange rather, and then I looked at it thinking, it's going to be such a bright orange against the white, I'll leave them clear, because if this was my car, I'd probably have them clear. And the final stage is a quick wax over with the, uh, sorry, with the UMP Shine, this is. So it's just a wax based product, and you just wipe it over, it's not abrasive, it doesn't need polishing in. Once it hazes off, you can buff it up and it leaves a nice wax surface behind. It's ideal for doing these cars. Works absolutely perfect. In case of going round, let it haze off. Use a clean piece of the uh, glasses cleaning cloth and buff it all up until you get a nice, beautiful shine. I've got to say, this thing looks absolutely fantastic. What a great kit. and A bargain compared to the Tamiya Type R, which easily goes for like £90 if you can find it. There we go, beautiful, like I say, standard ride height, beautiful deep black gloss roof, beautiful deep um, gloss white body shell, there's nice turned exhausts on the end, beautiful chassis, and that nice interior, I think it looks absolutely fantastic this one, very happy with it. So yeah, rather than paying like £90 for a Tamiya kit, um, this kit cost me about £18, the trans kit was like 35 so it's a huge saving, and I personally think this looks better than the time you're offering and there we go some uh, final pictures and uh, we'll go back to me so absolutely lovely love this car love the way this thing looks so this was primed eventually in pro scale gray and white primer and then painted several coats of honda grand prix white we masked and painted the roof in pro scale uh, jet black and then we 2K cleared it all after we gave it a panel line wash from Tamiya. The wheels are the same Grand Prix white. We used a detail set from Zoom on to add uh, all the brake discs, the interior seats, the wheels, the exhaust tips and so on. And some engine parts as well. Um, it was all flatted back with Trizer 3M pads and polished up with the Menzerna compounds. And the Zoom on sponges, which worked absolutely great. The interior is Pro Scale Black Grey with uh, Mr. Hobby GX Red on the seats. We used anthracite flocking on the interior and some more of the PE parts from the Zoom on kit. Fantastic kit from Tamiya, out the box, highly recommend this one, and even better when um, used with the Type R kit as well, because I think the Type R is the ultimate version of this car. So there we go. Excellent build. Back to me with some final thoughts. Right then, so there we go. Another one off the bench. I think this is build six of the year. I lose track. I, I truly do lose track of where I'm at now. Um, great build. Absolutely fantastic build. The zoom on kit. Brilliant addition to the kit. Just adds those missing details that the Type R kit has. So glad I went with white, and I'm so glad I had that kind of happy accent at the beginning. Um, because I don't think I've been happy with the white for the shade of white it was, and I got a feeling that pink, well, red would have bled through and made the white pink. So I'm kind of glad I had a bit of a screw up on my behalf with the paint and stripped it and started again because I think it looks better for that as well. Um, so yes, if you're not happy with something. It's always time to fix it. That's the best advice I can give anyone. But really enjoyed it. Really happy with the results. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. And uh, we're on to the next one now. So the next one you'll see after this is the 62 Impala, I think. I'm way ahead of these videos than you're watching now. I think um, patrons three months ahead of ISM on builds. There's so many on there. Um, and I'm always one ahead on these videos. I've just finished the 62 Impala. So that's ready to be edited, and I'm just about to start my next kit, which was going to be something different, and I had a last minute change of plan. I'm going with this vintage Johan Superbed that's going to be a bit of work, and we're doing that in Chrysler Vitamin C Orange, which is one of the factory colours that car came in. So that's going to be interesting to do. Um, so like I say, become a patron down below, you get month's early access, you keep these videos going, loads of perks. If you pick the applicable tier, you'll get your month's payment back just by putting a pro scale order and saving money there uh, and there's links to everything else down there pro scale paint the forum the website off air hangout group links to everything i use in my videos there's an email address to get in touch with me uh what else is down there my um, scale mate is there my etsy store selling my built models is all down there um so yeah have a look down there anything you want to know all the products I use in my videos are down there as well 
Uh, and as I said, if something's there and you haven't seen it, ask me a question in the comments and I'll do my best to answer you. So there we go. There's another one off the bench. On to the next one. And I'll catch you all next time. Don't forget, uh, make sure you sub to the channel. Click the bell notification so you get notified of the latest videos. Give the video a thumbs up or down and leave a comment. Love reading all your comments. I might not always respond because I can be there all day typing replies to comments. But I do read everyone and appreciate everyone that takes the time to leave a comment. So there we go. Thanks for watching everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. And a huge thanks to all my patrons whose names are going to flash up at the end of this video. So take care everyone. Bye bye.